New Florida State ACC drama just dropped. Joe, are you ready? Hit me. All right. This is from warchant.com. I'm going to pull it up on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. This is the headline. Florida State takes aim at former ACC Commissioner John Swafford in amended complaint. Before I even read this, Joe, how much you want to bet this is about the Raycom deal? How much do you want to bet that they've finally gone, they've, they've fully formed the, the, the actualized message board personification in lawyer form? Let's talk about Chad, Chad Swafford, and how we got screwed with the Raycom deal, and that's why we're in the position we're in. How much you want to bet that's what this is? Got to be. Ding, 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 ding. That's exactly what it is. In a 59-page amended complaint for declaratory judgment, 21 pages longer than the original complaint, they took sharp aim at former Commissioner John Swafford for a number of allegedly self-serving actions. It says cost member schools millions upon millions of dollars. FSU's attorneys also rebutted several claims from and questioned the legality of the ACC's complaint, which was filed a couple of weeks ago. The phrase self-dealing, again, this is from Warchant.com. Ira Schofield wrote this. That allegation, which is raised repeatedly through the document, suggests that Swafford for years was acting in, in the best interest of its son, Chad, and his son's employment with ACC television partner Raycom Sports over the needs of the conference and its member schools. The complaint contends that ACC schools have lost $82 million each year in revenue from their Tier 2 and tier three media rights as a result of the conference's sweetheart deal with Raycom, a regional sports network in Charlotte. According to the new filing, Chad Swafford was the director of business development at Raycom Sports in 2008 when the SEC sold all of its media rights to ESPN, cutting Raycom out of the deal for the first time in over two decades. A Sports Business Journal article cited in the complaint stating that 20 Raycom employees were laid off as a result. Quote, through just recently, though just recently employed by Raycom Sports, Chad Swafford was spared in the employee cut, noting that roughly 80% of the media outfits revenues were coming from the ACC at the time. And when the conference's media rights came up for bid on the open market in 2010, Florida State alleges John Swafford made it clear to ESPN and Fox that Raycom needed to be involved in the package. It goes on and on and on. And they cite other articles like Forbes from 2012 with the ESPN deal. Featuring a headline, did ACC teams get ripped off with this new ESPN contract? Pointing out that the Big 12 were making $3 million more per school than those in the ACC. Also citing a Sports Business Journal article around the same time, claiming the, conf claiming the conference deal was outdated because the Pac-12 had just signed a bigger contract with Fox. There's a couple of things here, Joe, that I wanted to get to, including that last part about the Big 12 and the Pac-12 and things like that and big television deals and everything else. Are you surprised that Florida State finally went to the Chad Swafford Raycom card? I think this has been a topic uh, that, I, that I've, I've talked about with Debbie Yao on Law of the Wolf. Mm -hmm. This has been a topic that others in, in other iterations that we've talked about. Yeah. In how, what is there a legitimate purpose to what Raycom was doing for the league? Mm -hmm. And I, I think even the most deranged of conspiracy theorists, which we, we've, I think we've hit. I think we've hit that with Florida I think State, even yeah. they would have to acknowledge that there is an actual production role that Raycom played. Mm -hmm. Do I think there's a inappropriate, obviously familial um, benefit to what had happened? Yeah. Absolutely. I just started watching I, Sopranos. But, so it's the family business. Yeah. Right? But do, do I think that happens in every form of business? And would I do the same thing for my son? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, uh, wow, John Swafford, what a, I can't believe you did this. We know this deal comes off the books, though. It does. In, at the end of 26. It does. And it will equal more money for these schools. We, we know that. So financially, they have a sound financial argument. Yeah. There, there's no doubt about that. Now, some of their timing, though, I think is off of when, you know, when was the ACC actually going to get a network? I don't. I don't think the ACC network really was in play until or in, in in earnest. Joe, sixteen, seventeen. It was eighteen. It wasn't. And th I this think, argument back to twelve. I, I think that's a specious argument. Yeah, this is. Uh, it's funny. I'm actually going back to going back to notes um, from 
the summer when it comes to money and things like that. So it, this is actually one of the benefits of since we've moved to podcasting, I've actually done a much better job of keeping your notes, keeping my notes and things like that. So I had to go all the way back to when we talked about this back in September when it comes to the kind of money and, and things like that. The Pac-12, I wanted to address real quick because Florida Pac State... 12 or Big 12? The Pac-12. Because okay. Florida State invokes the Pac-12 in a Sports Business Journal article about how the Pac-12 got a better deal from Fox. What did that get the Pac-12? Does the Pac-12 still exist? Just because you have more TV money doesn't necessarily mean that everything is going to be great. And when you're coming at it from the... And that's the one thing, if you have any takeaway from any of these conversations related to Florida State and the ACC, Florida State has not wanted to be inside the ACC for a long time. They're just not... They don't, yeah, from our conversations with Holden Thorpe, it, this was one of, not the Raycom specifically, yeah, but their concerns do go back. They go back. Florida State has not wanted to be in this conference for a very long time. They're constantly complaining, constantly complaining about all their all the all the issues that they're dealing with are somebody else's fault. It's your fault. If we just if we just had more money, if we had a better TV deal, having a better TV deal doesn't mean squat. If schools are not motivated to stay and they're chasing a bigger payday. And let's say that this Raycom deal went differently. Let's say the ACC, because you, you brought up the network. When all these things were taking place, you and I both know, and heck, we can bring Luke DeCock back on. We all know that back in 2008, 2010 timeframe, when these things were getting knocked out, the ACC was not getting a network. No. Okay. They were just not getting a network. Now, if you start getting to 2012, could they have expedited the process of getting the network if they went all in? on ESPN in the same way that the SEC did? Maybe, but you're looking at an ACC network that launches in 2016 rather than 2019. But the you, same you, issues the same issues still present themselves with the ACC today, whether you same. got the network in 2016 or 2019. You also have to still pay for the production of the games. And that's where Raycom comes into play. And Raycom, you know, people talk about Raycom and, and its role and things like that. There's a couple... There's a couple benefits to it. ESPN is not in the business of running everything. They sub-license people all the time sure. to run their stuff. And Raycom really is a backbone to a lot of the production that you see today, even for the ACC network. Even with Raycom coming off the books, they're still being utilized. And CW is CW. kind of like yeah. the, the ghost of Raycom, if you will. And there's also, I was told a long time ago when it came to TV ratings, in terms of visibility, those Raycom games that were over the air, Sometimes, and even sometimes on the Bally Sports or Fox Sports Carolinas at the time, those were getting better ratings than some of the ESPNU games because they were more regional games that people cared about at that time. So there's all sorts of factors that come into play. But as it relates to, as, as it relates to money and all this stuff coming off the books and whatnot, I don't think this is a bad play by Florida no, it's State, not. though. It's not. Because you're trying to demonstrate a loss of income, right? Yes. So you, they can point to the books and say, in 26, when this comes off, we are going to get per school $3 million more per per school per year. Yeah. So there, there's a legitimate financial point to this other than, you know, they're obviously trying to negatively paint Swafford in the nepotism light here. I mean, I, and I get that. I don't know how much that plays in court, but I think the, the actual math equation is on their side. All they're trying to do, Joe, is reduce the rate that it's going to cost them to get out of the deal. That's yeah. what they're trying to do. Yeah, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because that's exactly it. Essentially, what we're dealing with here is when this all started, it really just started the process of playing the game. It started the math problem and both sides figuring out what's the number? what the number as, is going to be. As Bubba said to us, what's the number? What is the number? Now, I'm going to do this again. Yesterday, I had to do this for the purposes of signing my kid up for hockey camp. I'm going to mm -hmm. pause the podcast again because I thought I had it in my notes. The Raycom sub-licensing deal is coming off the books in 2026. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you and I have talked about. We've talked about it with Debbie Yao. We've talked about it with Holden Thorpe. I've talked to industry insiders about this kind of stuff. And the part that people failed to recognize and why I kept arguing why you should not expand, why you should not add Cal, Stanford, and SMU from over mouths to feed is because the ACC is about to get an influx of cash when it's all ESPN, when the extension kicks in in 2026. Okay? Theoretically. Right. Theoretically, because we found out. We didn't know about this. We didn't know. Unilateral extension. We, we didn't know about that part. So, so thank that, you, Florida State. That was new information, <laughs> which shout out to Florida State. It's been told to us that the ACC is going to get $250 million more a year 
out of this new deal. The average annual value will go up, you know, to $250 million. And I think it ended up being what, like five to six to seven million dollars extra coming to each school. Something to that effect. I think right? originally the number was three. And the number that Florida State's using here is three mil per year. But per it school. keeps going up. And this gets back to my notes and something I had jotted down in that the 26 to 2035 deal, the extension, actually gets elevated to half a billion dollars, five hundred million dollars of average annual value, not the 250 that has been reported and what's been told to us. I've been told by somebody else that it's actually 500 million, which again, just bolsters my argument that they never should have expanded because you were about to get more money per school. But this, to go forward, totally understand where Florida State is coming from. I would have done the same thing. But if I'm the ACC, now I fight back. And if I'm the ACC, if I'm Jim Phillips, if I'm doing this correctly, I now start to go back and keep receipts on what Florida State hasn't been doing in the ACC. To get in front of a judge, look, these were deals that were done before me. I've been trying to get this thing off the ground, try to find a better way to make the ACC financials work, but we do not have somebody that's invested in making it work for the rest of the conference like everybody else. When you go and look at leadership positions, when you go look at the other schools like Bubba and UNC, where they will communicate with other schools, do you know who's not? Do you know who's been going rogue this entire time? You know who actually went, hey, what can it's a meeting? I know how much you love meetings, Joe. And you got 15 different people sitting at that table. Florida State is just sitting, arms crossed, in the back of the room. We're not doing anything. We hate everything. They're the complainer in the meeting. They're not looking for any solutions. They're not looking for ways to help. They're not doing any of that stuff. They're just malcontents. We're sitting in the corner, arms folded. Don't care. Don't want to be here. I'm looking for another job. That's what Florida State is. They're quiet quitting. Essentially. Well, eh, Florida State doesn't well, do anything quiet. quiet. No, no, no. Florida State doesn't do anything quiet, man. <laughs> they're, 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 they're shouting quitting. Yeah. That's, that's all <laughs> Loud that is. quitting. That's all it is. So that's what I would, I would throw back at Florida State, get in front of a judge, and just, because again, it's not like they don't have records of all these meetings. Every spring meeting, every AD meeting, text messages, all that stuff. You could just say, hey, guys, I get it. You hate the deal. But what have you done to actually help the conference? And they could easily say nothing. You've done nothing to help the conference. Hell, you don't even win enough to help the conference. So there's that. Something to keep an eye on. It's getting ugly. And like we said from the jump, Joe, when the lawsuits actually happen, this is just going to be a continuation. We're going to get this all summer. It's going to be a fun ACC kickoff in July. Or, uh, like <laughs> I, we've surmised, there's a deal to be made. Yeah. I think the deal gets made. I uh, think the compromise is coming. The more you let, the more you let this stuff out, the the worse it gets for all sides. You know what I mean? Yeah. Particularly the ACC. I love how they've already countered with a breach of contract by simply exposing the unilateral clause for ESPN to uh, continue the deal that's, after twenty six. That's a trade secret, Joe. Mm, can't, sure, can't be exposing the sure. trade secret because NC State and North Carolina and all the other public schools don't take any public money. <laughs> right. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Mm -hmm.